All right, uh, for the first time since uh, the um, early 1960s when Mao starved millions and millions of his own population, uh, the, uh, the population of China is actually uh, showed a decline. Now, uh, let me just say that this is assuming we believe Chinese numbers because uh, it, it, it is indeed hard to tell what is actually going on in China, and there are demographers and there are commentators out there claiming that China's population, um, uh, Peter Zin in particular, uh, that, uh, that um, uh, China's population has been declining for several years now. But uh, according to official Chinese statistics, for the first time since the 19, uh, early 1980s, uh, China's population um, fell by 850,000 people. Uh, to 1.41 billion, uh, and uh, the country had 9.56 million births, 10.41 uh, million deaths, uh, and uh, population is shrinking. Young people, 16 to 59, you could think of it as working age um, uh, population, um, is also gone down to 62 percent from 62.5 percent. I mean, these are significant numbers. Um, the expectation is that this will continue that this will continue significantly until in, in the 2021. So a, a tiny little increase in population. Now, part of this is COVID, um, but COVID, uh, you know, we'll see, I think, the impacts of COVID more in the 2023 numbers. Uh, China is announcing, as, as declared, the 60,000, they had 60,000 um, COVID deaths between December 8th and January 12th. Uh, but nobody believes that number. Everybody, everybody uh, who, who looks at what's happening in Chinese hospitals and what's happening in Chinese cities believes the number is much, much larger than that, maybe uh, 10 to 20 times larger than that. Uh, very few people. Uh, China has a foreign workforce, but they don't count those in, uh, in the population because foreigners... I don't think I, I don't think foreigners can become Chinese, um, but they also have you know one of their big problems is where they're going to have to allow some immigration, is that they have way too many uh, men and too few women. So as a consequence of the one-child policy, not only are they uh, did they gain a shrinking population, one child is not enough for a placement, but they also uh, there was a lot of self-selecting for uh, boys over girls. So what happens is that there's an entire, I think two generations of, of uh, Chinese where there are way more men than women and, and therefore they're not gonna be able to have that many kids at all because uh, there's just not enough marriages unless they allow uh, immigration of uh, women into the country uh, for the purposes of marriage, which they might do, who knows. Uh, I don't think they have done, but they might do in the future. There are foreign workers by million in southern China and certainly in places like Shanghai, uh, but I, they don't count them in these statistics, and uh, they don't count them as, uh, as uh, immigrants, as technically immigrants. Um, the other thing that was announced this, way, this week is that China reported its lowest uh, GDP number in, um, I, I think, uh, the only other year was 2020, the COVID year. Uh, at 3% for 2022, uh, it, it, it's much lower than uh, previous Chinese government targets. It's significantly lower than the high growth rate of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, China's uh, last 40 years. Uh, you know, uh, I think American investors and European investors, or generally investors, are pouring a lot of money right now into China, into Chinese markets, into Chinese companies, under the assumption that now that China's opened up and, uh, and now, in a sense, that they're getting COVID out of their system, that uh, what's going to happen as a consequence is the Chinese economy is going to boom and we're going to go back to the good old days. And uh, this is a great time to be investing in China. Let me just say I'm skeptical. Um, I think that slower economic growth is uh, what's in store for China in the future, at least until uh, as long as Xi maintains his uh, commitment to central planning. Uh, and um, it's, um, 
you know, I think it's probably foolhardily to, to, to jump in with such enthusiasm as it seems like foreign investors. Oh, now, a lot of times the foreign investors, it's funny because a lot of the foreign investors investing in China happen to be, uh, tend to be Taiwanese, for example, or, or Chinese from overseas. Um, Taiwanese should know better than anybody. Uh, and and it's, it's funny that Taiwan being under th constant threat of Chinese invasion uh, and, and uh, is maybe the biggest investor in mainland China, one of the biggest investors in mainland China per capita, certainly the biggest investor in mainland China, and making it possible for them to, uh, to uh, kind of build up the, the, the resources that would make an invasion of Taiwan possible. It's a bizarre world in which we live, in which the, uh, the victims are constantly sanctioning uh, the aggressors and constantly supporting uh, the aggressors. Uh, so that's uh, just a little bit uh, more on China. We'll, 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 I'm sure we'll be talking more on China um, as the year develops. There's, uh, the, there's going to be a lot of both foreign policy and economic issues that China is going to be involved in. And of course, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how COVID ultimately lands up playing out um, in China. The Chinese population shrinking, as I told you it would, and that's going to accelerate. And by the way, that is, you know, expanding population is pro-growth, economic growth, just from a pure growth perspective. Shrinking population is a, is a challenge for growth. So um, it, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, China deals with these challenges. Uh, uh, it's going to try to bribe people to have kids, but that doesn't seem to work and doesn't seem to work anywhere in, um, in the modern world. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.